Just like we use the analysis of variance table to help us understand what variability is being explained by the model in simple linear regression, we could use that ANOVA table again in multiple linear regression to understand more about the variability in our regression. And so here's a table, an ANOVA table, that we could use for multiple linear regression. We can use it to partition the variance. The biggest difference compared to the simple linear regression is just in the number of degrees of freedom used in the model. And so for the regression, we have a degrees of freedom equal to P, where P is the number of predictors used in the regression equation. Our residual degrees of freedom is N minus P minus 1, and our total degrees of freedom is N minus 1. We can calculate the sums of squares for regression, residuals, and the totals. We could calculate the mean square values for the regression and for the residual by taking the sums of squares and dividing them by the degrees of freedom. And then we can calculate an F statistic. And this F statistic will let us know how well our regression performs. And so with any multiple linear regression, you can add the values into a table like this to help you assess how well the variability is being partitioned in your regression equation. Next, we'll talk about how we can use the F-test in multiple linear regression. So the ANOVA F-statistic, that value in the ANOVA table all the way over to the right, tests these hypotheses. That is, it tests the null hypothesis that all of the slopes are equal to zero. That is, the slope for beta 1, beta 2, all the way up to beta p is zero. Now, the alternative is that at least one of those values, beta j, is not equal to zero. And so we can say that if the null hypothesis is true, the distribution of f follows the f distribution with p and n minus p minus 1 degrees of freedom. Remember, the F distribution has two degrees of freedom. And so the value of the p-value can be written as the probability that our statistic uppercase F is greater than some lowercase f or some critical value of F we might look up on a critical value table or we might find from something like our software. Now, the important thing to remember with the F-test and multiple regression is that a significant p-value does not mean that all of your p-explanatory variables have a significant influence on y. All that a significant p-value means is that at least one of those explanatory variables has a significant influence on y. And so that's a really important thing when you're looking at the output from multiple regression. Here's a concept we talked about in simple linear regression, but we didn't really use models with multiple variables in simple linear regression, but we do now, now that we have multiple linear regression. The adjusted R squared is a value that we will always use when we report the effects or the output of a multiple linear regression. The adjusted R squared is also called the squared multiple correlation. It's also, uh, like the regular R squared, uh, we often multiply it by 100 and express it as a percent. Uh, here is the values, uh, these are expressed as a proportion, but we can see the R squared value in the chicken data doesn't really go down if we add more variables, but the adjusted R squared does. And you can see the adjusted R squared going down because you can think about it penalizing you. If you have P as a very large number, the denominator here would be smaller, such that uh, your adjusted R squared would go down as P increases. And so the adjusted R squared is an important value to report when we talk about multiple linear regressions, because it incorporates how many independent variables are in your model, and it penalizes you for any additional variables.